From the man who stole $200,000 by holding a commercial airline ransom and got away with it, a priestly man with mystical powers born in the wrong century that nearly destroyed Russia, to a woman who arrived on the coast of England and, among other things, spoke a strange language, swam naked, and prayed to a god named Alitala until something happened to her. These are the top 10 most mysterious people of all time. Number 10. Grigory Rasputin Only a few characters have inspired such devotion, revulsion, and fascination as Grigory Rasputin. Born in Siberia in 1869, the devout religious mystic is inextricably linked to the end of the Romanov dynasty in Russia during the Russian Revolution. Why? Tsarina Alexandra, the queen of the last emperor of Russia, relied on Rasputin's mystic reputation to preserve the health of her son Alexei, stricken with hemophilia. It's a disease that prevents blood from clotting, thus causing its victims to potentially die from cuts or wounds which refuse to stop bleeding. Even a minor cut is potentially deadly. Rasputin took advantage of this position in a way similar to how most of America's college frat boys would. He had endless sexual liaisons with countless members of the Russian nobility, and he developed a hedonistic appetite for alcohol and anything else he could get his hands on, or what the commoners of the time would call association with the excesses of the wealthy, and what we'd call today jealous. Remember, this guy was looked up to as a priest with the ability to harness the power of good as a means for fueling his mystic powers. But once he revealed, or perhaps discovered, his true passion, living like a rich playboy, he became quite unpopular with Russia's common folk. Since he was associated with the nobility, they too also became quite unpopular. This was quite a juxtaposition for the queen and her son with hemophilia, because despite Rasputin had no medical training and was as phony as a $3 bill, Alexei began to respond to his treatments. During World War I, the nobility's unpopularity, partially due to the queen boxing herself into hiring a playboy instead of a scientist who could build a time machine and retrieve a doctor from the future, caused the monarchy to weaken to a frightening degree. And you don't want a weak monarchy during a war any more than you want to be drunk playing risk. Therefore, others surrounding the monarchy who felt the lives of millions were more valuable than making sure the queen's son didn't cut himself, unanimously decided to eliminate the priestly playboy. And after repeated attempts, he was finally killed off in 1916. But not before he was first poisoned, then shot repeatedly, bludgeoned, and finally disposed of by being rolled up into a rug and tossed into a river. Could Rasputin have avoided his grisly end? Well, sure. The Queen could have built a time machine and Rasputin would have been able to find his true calling, enrolling as a student at Tulane University in New Orleans. The number one party school according to colleges.niche.com, man. Number 9. Princess Caribou in 1817, a mysterious young woman appeared in Gloucester, England. She wore a turban and spoke a strange language no one could understand. For months, people flocked to meet the strange woman whilst a number of linguists came to study her. Finally, with the help of a man who claimed to understand what she said, her story was translated. She was a princess of the island of Javasu in the Indian Ocean. She was captured by pirates but escaped and swam to the English coast. Princess Caribou became famous for behaviors very similar to the free-spirited female hippies of the 60s and 70s, such as praying to her god named Alitala, dancing exotically and swimming naked in a nearby lake. Unfortunately for her, and people getting free shows lakeside, she swam into women's notoriety, which proved to be her undoing. A boarding housekeeper identified Princess Caribou as a young woman named Mary Baker. Mary had worked as a servant in a number of locations before she hatched her scheme to build a better life. Though the truth was revealed, Princess Caribou still traveled throughout the U.S. before returning home to England, where she eventually married, had a daughter, and died at age of 75. The mystery here is, why would an otherwise ordinary servant invent such an outlandish story? I think I can solve that one. She was a servant. Being a servant sucks. Frankly, the woman was a genius. She not only got the attention, but also fooled an entire country into believing a complete fabrication. Compare her life beforehand with her life after she pulled this off. It's inspirational. Number 8. The Falling Man No single photograph better captures the horror and despair of the September 11th terror attacks on the U.S. than Richard Drew's photograph that ran in the New York Times on September 12, 2001. The photograph, taken just moments before the collapse of World Trade Center's South Tower, shows a man plummeting to his death after having leapt from the top of the burning building. Even though the clothing was carefully analyzed and hundreds of potential relatives interviewed, the man was never definitively identified. He remains a faceless testament 
to the tragedy that befell the nation on that day. Number 7. D.B. Cooper In 1971, a man calling himself Dan Cooper hijacked a plane with a bomb encased in a briefcase. When the plane landed in Seattle, Cooper, mistakenly called D.B. Cooper by the media, requested $200,000 in cash, four parachutes, and food for the flight crew who remained on board. The passengers were released, the plane took off, and somewhere north of Portland, Oregon, Cooper parachuted out of the plane. He was never seen again. In 1980, a young boy found $5,800 in cash along the banks of the Columbia River in Washington. Though it is speculated the money washed downstream from where Cooper landed, neither the hijacker nor his body has ever been found. If you ask me, Sasquatch got him and the loot, then took off to Seattle and started Soundgarden. Spoon Man! Come to get him! Whatever. Number 6. The Man in the Iron Mask Made famous by Alexandra Dumas' novel of the same name, The Man in the Iron Mask is a figure of dark secrets that has inspired countless researchers who seek the truth about the prisoner kept in a French prison for nearly four decades. The prisoner was forced to wear an iron mask and was prevented on penalty of death from communicating with another soul. It's speculated that the man must have been of noble birth, as otherwise the French government would simply have had him executed. Dumas's novel, as well as a major motion picture, have added fuel to the centuries of speculation surrounding just who this man was. Rumors identify the man as King Louis XIV's father, while others believe he was a man named Eustache Duge. The man died in prison before he was ever released. We will never know for sure who was held for so long in that prison cell, or just why it was so important that no one ever found out his true identity. Number 5. The Isdell Woman in 1970, a university professor and his daughters were hiking in Norway's Isdalen Valley when they happened upon a gruesome and perplexing sight. The partially burned corpse of a naked woman surrounded by sleeping pills, a liquor bottle, and bottles that had held gasoline. Police connected the deceased woman to two unclaimed suitcases in Bergen, but the contents only deepened the mystery. Not only had the woman's fingerprints been sanded off, but the labels had been removed from all her clothing. The lining of the allegedly connected suitcases concealed a diary in code, as well as German currency. Strange. Future investigation revealed the woman had traveled under a number of different identities, spoke several languages, and had dental work done in South America. The Isdell woman was never identified, but it is assumed she was a spy that had been executed in the Norwegian Valley. Number 4. The Last Jew in Venitsa one of the most iconic images from World War II belonged to a member of the notorious Nazi death squad known as the Einsatzgruppe. The photograph shows a mass grave with a man kneeling on its edge. This man was the last of the Ukrainian Jews to be massacred in Venitsa. The expressionless gazes of the Nazi soldiers who observed the execution about to occur, coupled with the hopeless expression and sunken cheeks of the man about to die, capture the true horror and brutality of the Holocaust. The Jewish man in the photograph has never been identified. The man in his context symbolically represent the horror of how millions of men, women, and children lost their lives in similar ruthless, inhumane, and sociopathic ways. Number 3. Jack the Ripper In 1888, five prostitutes were brutally murdered in the London neighborhood of Whitechapel. Journalists seized the story and began working to connect the five murders with other killings in the area whilst whipping London residents into a frenzy. News coverage was unprecedented, and the world watched as papers published a number of letters purported to be written by the vicious killer. The five murders, along with at least 11 more killings in the area, were never solved. Jack the Ripper's identity was never established. Whatever motivated him to commit so many acts of murder, and carry them out with such sadistic methods was also never understood. The mystery remains unsolved even today. Hundreds of theories exist regarding the events of Whitechapel's 1888 Year of Terror. However, because forensic technology was non-existent back then and Jack the Ripper appeared to carry out his acts with a high level of intelligence and planning, all the remaining evidence, most of which isn't even tangible, scatters the credibility of any theory attempting to solve the mystery this notorious killer left behind. Number 2. B. Traven 
Despite the fact that he published 12 novels in a book of short stories, not a soul can claim to have met world-renowned author B. Traven. His most famous work, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, was just like his other works, sent to literary agents with whom the author had never met face to face. Only a Mexican post office box gave any clue to the author's whereabouts. Most who speculate about his identity assume the writer is German by birth. Although there are quite a few theories regarding his true identity, there is no agreed upon consensus. He did, however, communicate his reasoning for remaining anonymous. B. Traven, in his own words, states, The creative person should have no other biography than his vax. Wonder what gave away the German. Number 1. The Babushka Lady On November 22, 1963, a woman tied a scarf on her head and took her camera to watch the motorcade of John F. Kennedy at De Lee Plaza in Dallas, Texas. We know she was there because she appears in a number of photographs, as well as in the Zapruder film of the assassination of President Kennedy. In the film, the woman is seen taking photographs and milling around after Kennedy's death. Although she was one of the closest witnesses of the shooting, she has never been definitively identified, nor have any of the photographs she appeared to be taking. After some time had passed, a woman named Beverly Oliver came forward claiming to be the babushka lady, named for the headscarf, her claims could never be substantiated. It's a bit peculiar that she was wearing a headscarf when one thinks about it. Why? Not only would it have concealed her identity, but it would have also looked fashionably natural, allowing her to blend in. It seems a little too perfect of a disguise. In fact, its perfection makes me wonder if it was planned out ahead of time. If it was planned out in this way and she was also associated with the assassination, how much of a larger plan may there have actually been, involving even how many more people? You've arrived at the end of this video. Now what are you gonna do? Click on another video with a fancy thumbnail that you'll ultimately be disappointed by? No! You're going to watch our top 10 Nazi secret super weapons video, then feel good afterwards. You'll click that big shiny yellow button that says subscribe in time anyway. So there's no need to do it now. Mm -hmm.